Howdy folks, and welcome to McNeil Maverick Senior Night in honor of the senior class of 2022. This year's class is made up of 12 seniors that started this journey with McNeil Baseball just four short years ago. They came here as boys, but they'll be leaving as men. Tonight we want to recognize each and every one of our seniors and their families. And we want to say thank you for all that you've given us. Does that sound better? Sorry. Should I start over? I can't tell. Anyhow, so picking up, we want to say thank you for all that you've given us, and thank you for your dedication to the McNeil Baseball Program. Um, I also want to make mention of several families that are riding their last rodeo here tonight with McNeil Baseball after having multiple boys in the program. Uh, these families have been a part of the program for five, six, and seven years. So to the Shooks, the Vosicks, the Schneiders, and the Granke families, who've all been a part of baseball for a long t time here, we just want to say hats off to all of you. So if you'll direct your attention to the first baseline, we want to give everyone a chance to go from first base back to home where it all started. So leading us off here is our catcher, number two, Garrett Banks. <laughs> Garrett is being escorted by his parents, Monica and Justin. After graduation, Garrett plans to attend UTSA to study kinesiology. His favorite baseball memory is last year's win over Rouse. He likes lifting weights and playing poker, and his favorite food is spaghetti with meat sauce. Garrett's hidden talent is that he can use chopsticks. Garrett, that's a good one for your resume. We also want to give a special thank you to Monica, who has served as the president of the Booster Club for the past two years and has spent countless hours supporting the program. Next up is number 23, third baseman Alex Briseño, escorted by his mom, Leedy, and his little sister, Mia. After graduation, Alex plans to go to Sam Houston State to study criminal justice. His hobbies are meditation and running, and his favorite baseball memory was when he hit a home run against Westwood in the last game of his junior season. His hidden talent is cooking, and his favorite food is seafood. In the three hole is pitcher and outfielder, number five, Timothy Calderon, escorted by his parents, Carrie and Hector. After graduation, Timothy plans to start working on ideas for a business and continue to build himself up for success in college. Timothy's hidden talent is that he can make his tongue into a clover leaf. He likes playing video games and watching movies, and his favorite baseball memory was pitching a complete game against the top 20 team in the country in his select league. His favorite food is pasta. Now walking in the cleanup spot for us here is first baseman, number 24, Jackson Collins, escorted by his parents, Christy and Jeff. After graduation, Jackson plans to attend UTSA. His hobbies are lift, weightlifting and hanging out, and his favorite baseball memory is hitting his first home run. If you want to know all of the countries in Europe, Jackson's your guy. You can ask him because he knows them all, and his favorite food is Cane's chicken tenders. We also want to add a special thank you to Jeff Collins, who's the Vice President of Concessions. Jeff, thanks for all that you do. And don't be afraid to share your burger seasoning secrets with us before you go. Right. Next we have number three, infielder Justin DeTucci, being escorted by his mom Lori and his mentor Brian Hansen. After graduation, Justin plans to attend Abilene Christian University. His favorite baseball memory is pitching on the mound at the Dell Diamond in Round Rock for the RBI regional team during his freshman year. <clears throat> and his hobbies are that he likes playing basketball, and he also spends time working as a coach for five to ten-year-olds with the Adidas Titans in Cedar Park. 
His hidden talent is that he created his own power washing company serving Central Texas, and he does that work on weekends. So if you need any power washing, look Justin up. And his favorite food is pasta. Coming next is pitcher and third baseman, number 20, Dominic Escamilla. He's being escorted by his parents, Tracy and Mondo. After graduation, Dominic plans on attending Texas A&M University to study mechanical engineering. His hobbies are playing video games and reading books. He's good at baking. And his favorite baseball memory was pitching against Lake Travis his junior year. Dominic's favorite food is sushi. Stepping up to the plate now is number eight, pitcher and outfielder Cole Granke, who is escorted by his parents, Wendy and Greg. Cole plans on attending Texas A&M to study computer science after he graduates. His favorite baseball memory was the tournament game this year where McNeil played great on both sides of the ball and run ruled Elgin. He enjoys running, gaming, and watching Brewers baseball and Cowboys football. His favorite food is cheese pizza. Now introducing number 29, pitcher and third baseman, Caleb Crail, escorted by his parents, Nancy and Freddie. Caleb plans on attending college at Texas State after graduation. His hobbies are games and helping out on his friend's property. His favorite food is General Cho's chicken, and his favorite baseball memory is when he and his select team won their first tournament. We also want to give a special thank you to Freddie Krell, who's currently the Vice President of Operations for the Booster Club. Freddie, thanks for everything you do to keep the wheels turning around here. On deck now is number 25, pitcher and first baseman Ryan Schneider, escorted by his parents Christine and Greg. Ryan plans on attending Middle Tennessee State University to study audio production and recording. His favorite baseball memory is pitching against Lake Travis. His hobbies are creating media, and he has a hidden talent as an ice hockey player. His favorite food is sushi. Greg was also a past president of the Booster Club, so Greg, thank you for your service as well. Up next is number 22, pitcher and infielder Ryan Shook, escorted by his parents Renee and John. After graduation, Ryan plans on attending the University of Texas, and he plans on attending law school after that. His favorite baseball memory is team dinners before Friday games and going to other McNeil sporting events to cheer along with the teams. His hobbies are fishing and hanging out with his friends, and his favorite food is Chipotle. Special thanks to John Shook as well, who's announced the McNeil Varsity Games for the last two years. That's the reason you'll have to put up with me tonight. John's down there for senior night. So now we have the shortstop, number nine, Ryan Vosick. Ryan's being escorted by his parents, Kim and Steve. After graduation, he plans on going to Baylor and planning to major in sports management. His hobbies are hunting and fishing at his grandparents' ranch, where he uses his hidden talent of hog sniping while singing all the words to Amarillo by morning. So his favorite baseball memory is traveling the Gulf Shores for the 12U World Series, and his favorite food is steak and cheeseburgers. And finish it, finishing us off now is pitcher and center fielder, number 18, Chris Wendisman, escorted by his parents, Melissa and Rob. After graduation, Chris plans on attending UT Dallas to major in electrical engineering. His favorite baseball memory was throwing a one-hitter against Rouse and winning 16-1. to His hobbies are spending time with friends and family, and Chris can actually play the cello. His favorite food is buffalo wings. 
Also, a special thanks to Rob Windesman, who's been running Game Changer for the team for the last two years. So let's have a big hand for this great group of 12 seniors and their families. Thanks for everything. All the good times, all the hard times, and all of your hard work and dedication over the years. We'll miss all of you guys next year. So as we close out our senior night ceremony and look forward to the future, I want to leave you with an old Irish proverb that really has nothing to do with baseball. Um, but it's a positive thing. It's a, it says, make today be better than yesterday, but not as good as tomorrow. So let's raise our glass one more time for this group as they head off into the future and keep swinging for the fences. Thank you, seniors, and thank you, parents.
We have a special treat tonight with the Coral Varsity Treble who will be singing the national anthem. Leading off for Cedar Ridge, number 15, Matthew Brooks. Number three, Tucker Ellen. Number 16, Bryson Dudley. Number 22, Danny Valdez. Number 10, Peyton Doolin. Number four, Hudson Hartgrove. Number five, Reese Connell. Number 13, Tyler Hartgrove. Number two, Kyle Norton. And number seven, Luke Salter. The Raiders are led by head coach Daryl Reeves. And now for your hometown, McNeil Mavericks. Leading off second baseman, number one, Jack Gomes. Shortstop number nine, Ryan Bossy. Center fielder number 18, Chris Windesman. First baseman number 24, Jackson Collins. Catcher number two, Garrett Banks. Left fielder number 12, Ramsey Simpson. Right fielder, number 14, Brandon Oreo. Your designated hitter, number 29, Caleb Crail. On the mound for your Mavericks, number 15, James Morio. Third baseman, Joseph Sandusky. Number three, Justin Dutucci. Number five, Timothy Calderon. Number eight, Cole Drakey. Number 16, Wyatt Newman. Number 20, Dominic Escamilla. Yeah, Number 21, Luke Hankey. Number 22, Ryan Shook. Number 23, Alex Brasinio. Number 25, Ryan Schneider. And number 26, Xander Kovar. Your Mavericks are led by head coach Silver Aguirre and assistant coach Hiram Drum. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we've got a special treat tonight. Please stand and remove your caps as the Coral Varsity Treble will sing our national anthem. That was amazing. Thank you so much.
All right, hello folks. Thank you for joining us this evening for game one this week of McNeil Mavericks versus the Cedar Ridge Raiders. Mavs hosting the Raiders here at home for game one. And uh, this is senior night, so a little bit of a late start here for two factors. One, we had a little bit of a lightning delay that prevented uh, pregame warm-ups by about 30 minutes there. Um, fortunately, that's all it was. There was no heavy storms or rain or worse. There was actually a, uh, a tornado reported a little bit north of McNeil here. And uh, fortunately, all that missed us, just a lightning delay. And then that also pushed back the senior night activities, which we were streaming live for, f uh, for folks at the beginning here, where we were honoring the 12 seniors on the Mavericks team that are uh, playing in their last couple of games here and uh, going to be moving on, graduating here in June and uh, getting set for the next chapter of their lives. So Cedar Ridge Raiders, 6-3 and three in district so far this season, 8-12 and 12 overall. And Mavericks hoping to put forth a good showing and a good effort this tonight. Again, here on senior night. Good crowd. Good crowd on both sides. Particularly good uh, representation from, looks like, some of the McNeil High School uh, students coming out to support their Maverick baseball team here tonight. So we're about to get underway here. Let's see, starting lineup for, or starting defense for the Mavericks here. Jack Jackson Collins, the senior first baseman. Jack Goins at second, senior Ryan Vosick at short. Joseph Sandusky at third base. Left field, Ramsey Simpson. Center field, the senior Chris Windesman. Right field, Brandon Morio. Uh, Garrett Banks, your senior catcher behind the plate tonight and starting pitcher, the left-hander James Morio. And Morio's ready to go. We're about to get underway and leading off for Cedar Ridge, center fielder Matt Brooks. First pitch, Brooks is a fastball, misses a little high and outside. Next pitch swung on, line drive. That's going to get down into left field, and that's going to go all the way to the wall. Simpson fields it, throws it into shortstop, and uh, Brooks will start off with a leadoff double. So Cedar Ridge starts the off the game here with a runner on second. That'll bring up the shortstop, number three, Tucker Allen. And he swings it and misses at a first pitch changeup, strike one. Pretty warm out here tonight, 82 degrees, 55% humidity, adding to the uh, kind of uncomfortable factor here. A little bit of wind blowing out left field side. And next pitch fastball misses outside and high. Ball two, or ball one. One, one pitch, swung on, fouled out of play. One ball, two strikes to count to the number two hitter, Allen. Next pitch slider fouled softly down third baseline. Next pitch, ground ball, sharply hit to Vosick at shortstop. He makes the catch, throws it over to first in time to get Tucker at first. And on the play, Brooks advances to third. Now batting number 16, Bryson Dudley. 
One away here for the Raiders in the top of the first. That'll bring up the number three hitter and catcher, Bryson Dudley. Good to be alongside you, Jason. We had a uh, beautiful evening for baseball, don't we? Indeed. Go for a little, best, little bit less humidity, but uh, hey, we're up here in the nice press box with air conditioning blowing on us, so it could be worse. Maybe that's why I say beautiful, because it's beautiful here in the press box. That <laughs> it is. That it is. AC is feeling good up in here. Two and zero the count to Dudley. And next pitch fastball misses a little bit low and outside. It'll be three balls, no strikes. Comes a 3-0 pitch in there, there called strike is. one. Three one pitch. Yeah. And it is I thought it was ball four, but called Bart strike. Says called strike in the outside corner. So Dudley heads back now with a full count. Dudley, a Texas A&M baseball commit, will continue his career after this season for the Aggies. Next pitch, fastball swung on, just got a piece of it and fouled it back to the screen. Stay alive. Got him. And yes, sir. Out the outside corner, strike three. For the second out for the Mavericks. First strike out for Morio, second out of the inning. Yep. And that'll bring up the cleanup hitter and then starting pitcher for the Raiders tonight, Danny Valadez. And some uh, tough start starting uh, top of the lineup here as the A&M commit is followed by the Baylor commit. And first pitch to Valadez, breaking ball misses a little high and out, ball one. It's like the wind's picked up considerably, judging by the uh, action on the flags out there in right center. Yeah, they're blowing a lot harder now. As Valdez takes a big swing and a miss on a changeup there for strike one. One one pitch, tried to go back to the breaking ball, misses a little high and out. So it'll be two and one. Yep, striking out the Baylor commit. That would be nice, too. You know, already got the Texas A&M commit striking out. Right. Comes in a little tight on that one there. Yeah. And count now goes to three balls and one strike to the hitter, Valadez. Matthew Brooks, still, still the runner on third. Started off the inning with a double. And it comes a 3-1 pitch. And misses outside, ball four. Two out walk for Valadez. And that'll make it runners on first and third now. And the third baseman, Doolin, will be the hitter. And we're going to have a courtesy runner for the pitcher, Valadez, at first. Number one, Joey Daniel, goes in. And we're going to have a lefty lefty matchup here with two outs. Swings the first pitch, fouls it back out of play. Five. 
A one pitch swung on, another ball fouled back into the net this time. So working ahead here, 0-2 on the number five hitter, Doolin. And Mario throws over to first to check the courtesy runner, Daniel. He's back in time. Looked like the runner on third, Brooks, was creeping on that throw there, but uh, held up at third. Comes the 0-2 pitch. Misses outside. Ball is thrown hard as the runner, Daniel, broke for second base there. Cut off by Mario, the pitcher. And it's a stolen base. And that will make it now runners on second and third with two outs. What do you call here, Dan, with the 1-2 count? What would be your pitch call? I'll go fastball up. Just a little bit outside yeah. there. Two two pitch. Fastball misses a little bit of high and out. So it's gonna be full count. Seeing if Doolin would chase it. Good idea. Two pitches in a row on the outside part of the plate. Three two pitch coming up. Swung on soft ground ball. Fielded by Goins. Gonna throw over to first in yeah, time, and that's him. gonna end the inning. Best part of all, no runs scored there for Cedar Ridge. Yep, so leadoff double, followed by a walk two batters later, goes nowhere. All right, we got a special treat on senior night. We'll be Cedar Ridge leaves two stranded here in the first. Parents, Bottom of the first coming up, Mavs coming to their first at bat. Still no score. We'll be right back. Jack Goins to lead it off for the Mavs here in the bottom of the first inning. Mavs worked out of a leadoff double. Last inning, no damage done. And we'll see if Goins can get it started for us here against the hard-throwing right-hander Danny Valadez pitching for the Cedar Ridge Raiders tonight. Goins looks at ball one to open the sequence. Next pitch is in there for a called strike. Yeah, tried to go to the breaking ball there. Looked like a slider attempt, but stayed high. Two one fastball misses outside and high, so it's three balls, one strike now the count. Two 
Swings the next pitch, fly ball into right field. Let's see if he's going to get down foul and not playable. So Gones will head back to the plate with a full count. I know when it left the bat, I, I was thinking, it's got a chance of staying fair, but no. That was yeah, with that wind blowing <laughs> to the left field side, too. I mean, <laughs> could, be, could be interesting. Some fly balls floating yeah. around up there tonight. 3-2 pitch coming up. Breaking ball misses there high. There you go. Ball four. So Goins is down there with a leadoff walk. And that will bring up number two hitter shortstop Ryan Vosick. Now batting number nine, Ryan Vosick. And first pitch to Vasek misses outside and high again, so Umpire he starts didn't off. didn't like it. <laughs> yeah, ball one. Ball one, and that's Dudley, the catcher, is going to head down and talk to his pitcher. Park keeps motioning over to the Mavs dugout. Oh, I think he's looking for extra balls. He's running low on baseballs. On deck, hitter Chris Windesman brings him over a handful of baseballs. Should be good for at least another at bat or two. <laughs> Yeah, we'll see how long it lasts. <laughs> Valdez definitely intent on keeping Goins honest over there at first. He's thrown over twice so far. Get you more. Another fastball misses high and outside. Another throw over coming. Goins is back in time. Ball gets thrown away here, but uh, nothing doing. Two-zero pitch to Vasek goes to the breaking ball, but that misses high. So three and zero. Let's get another walk here. Come on, knock on wood. It was outside. And it's four, four straight. Four straight to Vasek now. We'll put runners on first and go. second. Nobody out. That'll bring up the senior center fielder, Chris Windesman. <laughs> Valdez keeps going to that high outside fastball on the left-hand hitted Winsman and could get interesting because Winsman will turn on that and drive it. No doubt. In this case, Winsman squares around a bunt and actually bunts it foul out of play. Tries to check a swing on that last pitch, but goes around. So it'll be no balls, two strikes to Windsman. O2 pitch swung on, pop foul, back out of play right behind the press box here. I guess we're not really, we don't qualify as press box per se. We're more of a... A bunch of goofballs with microphones box back here. Was pretty, this? pretty much, pretty much, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Maybe press box is giving us a little too much credit. Oh, two line oh, drive, line drive, caught double. right by the first baseman, and unfortunately yeah, that double got play. Vasek lean in there. Yeah, for the bang bang double play. Not much you can do about that one. Nope. So two away now. That brings up number four hitter, the senior first baseman, Jackson Collins. Uh, he looks at a first pitch called strike. And 
Another pitch in there, called strike two. O2 pitch to Collins. Fastball misses far outside. Ball one. Jack Gowen, still your runner out on second there. Let off the inning with a leadoff walk. And the 1 2 pitch to Collins. Fastball swung on a miss. Strike three. So Mavs get two on by virtue of back-to-back -back walks, but unable to bring them around. Still no score as we head to the top of the second. We'll be back in a minute. All right, six, seven, eight, do up this inning for the Raiders. Leading off will be Hudson Hartgrove, first baseman. He swings the first pitch, sky high fly ball, kind of right center field area, right fielder Morio coming in, and he makes the grab go, Morio. for the first out of the inning. Brother Brandon Morio making the catch in right field. So he's got to make those because otherwise on the ride home and at home he's going <laughs> to hear it from his brother the pitcher there. So <laughs> Actually looks like we got brothers in this team too. Uh, Hudson Hartgrove we do. who just was out also has a brother uh, Tyler Hartgrove. Tyler Hartgrove's yep, on deck. Coming up soon right after Connell the designated hitter. So one down. First pitch to Connell was a called strike. Looks at another one called strike two on the outside corner. Another lefty-lefty matchup here. Quick 0-2 count now on Connell. Comes inside there. Kind of caught him on the fist. Just chopped it back into the screen foul. Great no two pitch. pitches in there, called strike three. Second strikeout of the night so far for Morio. Both of them strikeout looking. Backward Ks. And with two outs now, that'll bring up the other Hartgrove, Tyler Hartgrove. Right fielder.
<laughs> First pitch comes in. A little bit low and tight there to lead off the at bat. This is ball one. Next pitch swung on, fouled back in the screen. Just got a piece of it there. Pitch, good breaking ball, swung on, missed there, strike two. I think Banks thought that was strike three. He did. <laughs> <laughs> I like your enthusiasm, Garrett Banks. But Doesn't hurt to try to sell. Slow your roll a little bit. That's okay. <laughs> That's all right, though. One and two the count. Got two to the hitter, Hartgrove. <laughs> We're almost there. Next pitch, swung on, a little soft chopper right down the first baseline. Collins waits for it and then just takes it himself. And that will end the inning. So, Cedar Ridge goes one, two, three here nice in the top quick of the inning. second. Yeah. No runs, no hits. Heading to the bottom of the second. Five, six, seven in the order. Do up for the Mavericks. We'll be right back. All right, leading off for the Mavs here in the bottom of the second inning will be the catcher, senior Garrett Banks. Now batting number two, catcher, Garrett Banks. Swings the first pitch, ground ball go, between Garrett. short and third base, and that's going to be in for a single. Nice base hit in between the shortstop and third baseman. Out of boy, Garrett Banks. So Banks gets it started here for the Mavs at the bottom of the second. That'll bring up the... Left-handed hitting left fielder, Ramsey Simpson. And we're going to have a courtesy runner for the catcher Banks at first. I think that is that number 22, Ryan Shook, out there at first now? Looks like Mr. Ryan Shook. Yes, sir. Yes, it is. All right, so runner. the senior Shook now at first. And <laughs> he took literally one half a step, step off. Yeah, yeah, I don't even think it was one step. It was, that's right, half About a half. step. Half a step. Yeah, he's throwing back again. And the third throwback to first base. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's three. Count them up. And Simpson shows bun on the first pitch, but pulls back as the pitch misses high. Well, going back to Garrett Banks to lead off this inning, I love the first pitch swinging. You know, you get a pitch, you know, down the pipe like that, just see what you can do. Hit it hard somewhere. 
foul ball. That was a attempt at a bunt by Ramsey Simpson. Next pitch, we're going to miss. Take a hack right there. Cinco, that's five throwbacks yeah. <laughs> to first base. Yep. Oh, but who's counting? 1-2 pitch to Simpson. Swung on ground ball. Second base side. Fielded by the second baseman, but not enough time to throw and get the lead runner there. So he goes to first, retires Simpson. But Simpson, uh, Shook, who was running on the play, is in safe there at second base on the fielder's choice. And that will bring up the right fielder, Brandon Morio. Moore looks at a first pitch fastball, catches the outside part of the plate for strike one. Well, the fastball misses low and outside this time. Fastball there, caught the outside corner, looks like, called strike two. As the catcher Dudley heads down for another conversation with his pitcher. Comes the one-two pitch to Morio. Misses far outside, gets away from Can't the catcher Dudley. Catcher. Can't still find the ball. Still haven't found the ball. And He's Shook's going to try to come Shook all the way around. Shook is coming home. That's a by Shook. Does. And scores are the Mavericks' first run. <laughs> <laughs> it is absolute pandemonium over in the Mavericks dugout right now, folks. Uh, let's scroll. We can't scroll over there now. Uh, it's too late. Now. It's all good. We'll, we'll try to get it next time. It's all good. So all Shook, right. Shook comes around and scores on the pass ball. Yeah. And the Mavs are up here by a score of one to nothing. Heads up base running right there by Ryan Shook. And 2-2 two -two pitch to Morio is in there for a called strike three. Second strikeout for Cedar Ridge pitcher Valadez so far tonight. And with two outs and nobody on, that brings up the right fielder Caleb Crail, who swings the first pitch. Little pop fly, shallow center field, shortstop Allen comes over and makes the grab, and that will end the inning. So leadoff single from Banks results in a run who comes in on a two-base pass ball. Mavs on top by a score of 1-0 to zero as we head to the top of the third inning. We'll be right back.
All right, number nine hitter coming up, and then back to the top of the order here for Cedar Ridge. Second baseman Kyle Norton stands in for his first appearance tonight. The lefty-lefty matchup. Comes in high and tight with the first pitch fastball. Misses. Ball one. Brush him back. Nothing wrong with that. <laughs> Ooh, next, next, next pitch misses somewhere, but uh, <laughs> not sure where. Not sure where. Ball two. Two zero pitch swung on, lofted foul out of play down the uh, left field line. Looks like that's going to go into the opposing bullpen area. Another pitch, another line drive this time directly into the bullpen area. Oh, uh, we're going to have a catcher's interference, it looks like. Yep. Ah, uh, that's the call. So, foul ball actually ends up in a catcher's interference. So, Norton is aboard. And that brings us back to the top of the order. Leadoff hitter Matt Brooks, who started the game with a leadoff double. Well, he looks at a first pitch fastball, misses a little high and out. Could be me, but I thought I saw a flash of lightning out in right center a little while ago. Next pitch swung Whoa. on a deep fly ball out of the left field, and it looks like that ball is going to be out of here. You got a hold of that one. It is. Two run homer for Brooks. So a two run home run for Brooks. Puts the Raiders butt by a score of two to one. And that will bring up the shortstop, Tucker Allen. Allen grounded out to short in his first at bat. As you were talking about lightning, I know I was looking down, um, so I didn't, I'm, I'm hoping that wasn't lightning because I didn't see it, but I was looking down writing on my scorecard at the time, so hopefully that's not the case. Yeah, well the old the Thor uh, lightning detection system has not gone off, so I'm assuming yeah, it's okay. Then, okay. So Allen swings and misses at a first pitch high fastball there, strike one. Next pitch breaking ball lofted into the air. Kind of right field side. Looks like Morio lost the ball. The ball actually does get down fair. It's a fair ball. <laughs> or the umpire is calling foul. There's a lot of confusion going on in the field here. Let's wait till they get this sorted out. Allen is has left second base and is heading back. Yeah, looks like they're going to call it a foul ball. Home plate <coughs> umpire overruling. First the base coach field umpire, so foul ball. Go ahead. First base coach for uh, Cedar Ridge is. None too pleased with that call. It did look like it landed fair from from where we stand, sit. But it's a good thing for the Mavs because the right fielder, Morio, looked right away yeah. like he lost it in the in the lights. Oh, he never saw it. Yep. He never saw it leave the bat. His hands even look like they were up in the air. Like, I have no idea where the ball is. So, 1-2 pitch to Allen. Heads up. Lines it foul. Heads up, Mavs dugout. But it goes over the Mavs dugout. A little back and forth between the batter. Um, so number three, Tucker Allen and Garrett Banks, the catcher for McNeil.
That's what I saw, just a little bantering going back and forth. Well, you know, could be talking about what they had for dinner. They could. Who knows? They, that most definitely. <laughs> you never know. Well, regardless, we get a 1-2 count. Yeah, where where they want to eat afterwards. Yeah. That could be it. Favorite show on Netflix? Who knows sure, what's going on sure. there? Could have been anything they were discussing. <laughs> One-two pitch. Which wrong on <laughs> fly, fly ball. That's going to oh, get wow. the gap at left center field, and that's going to get down. Allen is going to hold up at second. Takes a big turn, but he's going to hold up at second base. Found the gap in left center field for stand-up double for Allen. So the a double follows the two-run home run by Brooks. Tucker Allen now stands at second base. Still nobody out. And that brings up the catcher, Bryson Dudley, who struck out looking in his first at bat. And first pitch attempt at a breaking ball gets... Gets out of the hands of Morio there in a non-optimal way. Misses outside and high. Next pitch fastball misses a little outside and low. 2-0 the count to Dudley. Next pitch swung on, pop a file out of play. Just misses the very last row of bleachers here. Wind has definitely died down now. Those yep. flags are much more still in right center field. 2-1 changeup, someone got a miss by Dudley. It's going to be two balls, two strikes now. I love that changeup. Good stuff. Ooh, another 2-2 two -two changeup just misses a little bit outside. I was expecting... Uh, Dudley to be swinging on that one, <laughs> or or to even, if that you know that didn't happen, I thought maybe the call, maybe the umpire will give the strike call. But nope. next pitch swung on, popped up, shallow center field. Second baseman Goins is over. Short, shortstop Vasa calls him off. Oh, and does not get oh. the ball. They're going to try to get to Allen going. But he got him. Oh, oh, and the ball he popped had out. Him. Ball popped out. And on that throw and the ensuing kind of. Uh, Bouncing around in foul territory there. That allows the hitter Dudley to advance to second base. Dudley's going to get a courtesy runner. Number 26, Luke Mikehill. My Hill goes in and runs for him at second. So that's going to put runners on second and third here. Still nobody out. And we're going to get a visit to the mound from uh, Mavericks head coach, Coach Aguirre. I thought that last ball would have been our center fielder's ball. But, you know, Vasek just, he was trying to make the play. It looked like maybe the win got a hold of it the last, last second, kind of blowing it. Off more towards left left field. I don't know, but regardless, E six on the play. Good effort. <laughs> Back in a second. All right, so Aguirre heads back to the dugout. 
And Morio gets Morio gets set to pitch to opposing pitcher Danny Valdez, who walked in his first at bat. And he looks at a fastball that misses high and out, ball one. Tries to check a swing on that last strike. pitch, but umpire called strike. One-one fastball misses a little high. Two and one to count to Valdez. Got Tucker Allen standing on third base. Courtesy runner My Hill stands on second. Yes. Next there pitch, big swing and a miss, strike two. <laughs> two two pitch coming up. Change up, misses outside low. So it'll be a full count now to Valdez. Good idea right there with the change up outside. And the change up just gets a piece of it and slaps it foul over towards the Mavericks dugout. Three two pitch misses outside ball four. That's okay. No harm on putting him on first base. First base was open, so now base is loaded. Yeah, any bag. Assuming the middle infielders will be at double play depth. Maybe bring the corners in. We'll see. So number one courtesy runner Joey Daniel takes the place of Valdez at first. And with bases loaded, nobody out. That brings up the number five hitter, Doolin, who grounded into who grounded out to second base in his first yeah. at bat. And he fouls the first, first pitch off out of play. Mr. Pitch swung on. Ground ball to shortstop. Knocked down by Vosick. Throws nice over second. Play. To force a second. Very nice force play by Vosick. Shortstop. So Allen scores from third on the play. And Dudley, or the pinch runner, or courtesy runner for Dudley, advances to third. Force out at second. And now we have one out, runners on first and third. Yeah, so that was Valadez that was forced out at second base, correct? Actually, the Daniel, the courtesy, Daniel, runner, the courtesy him, runner, yes. runner came in. Yeah, thank you for that. And the next hitter, Hartgrove. Hudson Hartgrove offered around to bunt but missed it, so it strike one. And on the run score there, that now makes the score three to one, Cedar Ridge. And runner from second, corner from first goes. They're going to throw down to second. Throw's not going to be in time. But the courtesy runner, My Hill, did not advance from third on the throwdown. So it'll be runners on second and third now. Takes the force out of uh, play. And we've got an 0-2 count to Hartgrove. Swings and just gets a piece. Fouls it back. O2 pitch just gets another <laughs> slight piece of it and fouls it back to the screen again. Yes. 
Another row two pitch. Swung on, little line drive, gets over the head of Vasek and into left field for a base hit. One run's going to score. They're going to hold up Doolin at third base. And on the throw in from left field, that's going to allow Hartgrove to advance to second. And the RBI single will make the score 4-1 to one now, Cedar Ridge. And runner still on first, uh, still on second and third with one out, and that brings up designated hitter Connell, who struck out looking in his first at bat, and he looks at a called strike one. Next pitch, hard ground ball, hits second base, fielded by Goins, throws over to first. Good scoop by Collins to get the out at first. That is going to bring another RBI. round in, or uh, another run in as Doolin advances from third to home. Now batting, Tyler Two outs now. And Hudson Hartgrove stands on third. Tyler Hart Hartgrove now the hitter. Hartgrove grounded out to third or to uh, first base in his last at bat. And it definitely was a nice scoop by uh, Jackson Collins there at first base, digging that ball out of the dirt. Score now, Cedar Ridge 5, McNeil 1 with two down. And we got runner on third base. Great pitch. And Hartgrove swings and misses on two consecutive fastballs inside. O2 pitch. Fastball swung on, little soft ground ball fouled over towards the Cedar Ridge first base coach who does not come up with the with the play. Another O2 pitch. Change up popped you got up. room, Jackson. Collins over in foul territory on the right field side. Nice he makes play. The Nice play for the third out by Jackson Collins, the first baseman for the Mavs. All right, next up we have so that ends the inning, but Cedar Ridge sends all nine hitters to the plate, tack on five runs, and are up by a score of 5-1 to one here as we head to the bottom of the third inning. Mavs coming up to bat. We'll be right back. All right, starting pitcher for the Mavs, the number nine here, James Morio, will lead it off for the Mavs here in the bottom of the third, and we'll be back to the top of the order. All right, first pitch to Morio, fastball comes inside, catches the inside corner, called strike one. Next pitch is swung on and fouled out of play. So it'll be a quick 0-2 count on the leadoff hitter here, Morio. No, 
Alter to the delivery cadence by Valdez. Comes in with a low fastball that misses ball one. And pretty much same pitch, same spot. Moria working back to 2 2 now. And tries to go to the breaking ball, but misses way high. And we're all the way back from 0-2 to a full count. Yeah, next pitch is swung on. Ground ball gets over the pitcher's glove, fielded by the shortstop, throws over to first. He's off the bag. Off the bag. Safe. So Morio finds a way to reach base here to start off the bottom of the third. He's going to get a courtesy runner. There you go. Yep. Looks like uh, maybe number 23, Alex Brasenio, is going to go in. Now batting for the Mavericks, number one, Jack Goins. And that brings us back to the top of the Mavericks order with leadoff hitter Jack Goins. Goins reaching a walk back in the uh, first inning. James Morio putting that ball in play, you know, with a 3-2 count and uh, running hard. And that first baseman, number four, Hudson Hartgrove, I saw his saw him coming off the bag, though. So, really not an infield hit. Yep. Semi-official ruling here is a single for Morio there. Yeah. He deserves it. Well done. Another conversation on the mound there by the Cedar Ridge Battery. As and we have confirmed that's uh, Alex Brasenio, number 23 for the Mavericks. Is the courtesy runner on first base? That's right. One of the seniors yes, being sir. recognized here tonight, Brasenio. He's going to throw back at you a lot, sir. <laughs> Pristine you, so. Oh. Going squares around a bunt. Pop bunts it to the first baseman who comes in and makes the grab in the air. Pristine holds up, though, and yeah. does not get doubled up at first. Um, so that's the first out of the inning. I'm going to bring up Ryan Vosick, who also reached in his only at bat tonight so far on a walk in the first inning. And Valdez throws over one more time to check uh, Braseno. And Valdez loves to keep him close. That's that's why, I'm, like Braseno, you're gonna you're gonna be moving back and forth a lot right there, buddy. And after the first pitch misses high, the next pitch fastball catches the outside part of the plate for a called strike. 1-1 one one the count to Vasek. And another throw over. Brasenio is maybe a step and a half off of the bag, but uh, Valdez intends on keeping him that way. As Vasek <laughs> swings and misses the next pitch, strike two. Valdez just doesn't like any lead whatsoever. Not at all. Lead. Half a step. Oh, I'm throwing back. <laughs> And one two pitches in there for called strike three. Third strike out for Valadez tonight. And two away now brings up uh, left handed hitting Chris Windesman. Windesman lined out on a sharp line drive to uh, first base back in his first at bat. And he takes a swing at him. Swing at a fastball on the outside corner there and misses strike one. Looks like we had some uh, a right hander, some activity up in the Mavericks bullpen there, a right hander. And next pitch to Windesman is in there for called strike two. Mm -hmm. 
Runner goes. Pitch is high. And the throw is down there in time to catch Briseño, who is caught stealing. And the inning will end on the base paths. Next up, we have senior number 20, Dominic Escamilla. So no runs, no hit, or well, no runs on one. A leadoff hit by the pitcher, James Morio, but unable to bring courtesy runner Briseño around. Score still 5-1 to one as we head to the top of the fourth inning. We'll be right back. All right, new pitcher for the Mavericks here. Number 20, the senior Dominic Escamilla comes in in relief for the starter, James Morio, who has left the game. And he will face number nine hitter to start it off here, second baseman Kyle Norton. Norton swings and misses the first pitch, strike one. Norton reached on a catcher's interference call back in his first at bat in the third inning and ended up being the first run scored as part of that five-run uh, rally that Cedar Ridge had last inning. Next pitch swung on, a little chopper, but one of these that's just going to bounce over the pitcher's mound, fielded by Vosick coming over from short. But Infield hit by Norton. One of those tough ones that just chopped and stayed up in the air long enough for the runner to get down. It's a chop ball that ends up pretty much in no man's land with yep. it in the infield. It's a no play, and Norton standing on first base with the Infield single. We're just back to the top of the Cedar Ridge order. Leadoff hitter Matt Brooks, who hit a two-run home run last inning. And not to be outdone by Valadez. Escamilla throws over to first. Check the runner there. He's back in time. Brooks uh, led off the game with a stand-up double. Swing, ground ball, sharply lined to, short st or to second base, fielded by the... Got the force out at second, but Vasek tried to throw it over to first to get the double play, but throws the ball over into the uh, Mavericks' dugout. And, well, uh, the ball caromed back off of the backstop okay, right so in front of the dugout. So runner Brooks is not advancing. So it stayed in, did not go yeah, into the dugout in. out of play. Right. We got the force out, though, with uh, force out Norton at second base. So Fielder's choice. Fielder's choice, yep. Brings up Tucker Allen as Brooks takes off on the first pitch, but he will head back as the ball is fouled back out of play. Sorry. 
Allen one for two tonight so far. Grounded out and then had a double in his last at bat. And Brooks with a considerable lead. He's going to throw over and... Ooh. Close play at first, but Brooks is back safely. Brooks definitely with the size of a lead that is worthy of a throw over there. Probably the only lead I've seen of such size tonight. Uh, he is almost a quarter Oh, he's of the way getting out even there. more. I'm going to throw over, and oh, oh. the throw is going to get away. Oh, but not. It's get away. Gets away from uh, first baseman Collins there, but not enough for Brooks to advance, so he'll just head back to first base. See if he, if Brooks gets that giant lead again. He's inching his way out there. Yep. Yep. Does not go, though. A one pitch to Allen misses high. Brooks goes. Pitch is high and inside, and it's not going to allow for a throwdown. So Brooks with the easy stolen base. Allen with the double the last at bat that he had. And he scored a run last inning. Another pitch misses high. 3-1 the count to the hitter, Allen. And 3-1 pitch, swung on, lofted into shallow right field. Morio coming in, and he is going to make the catch. Brooks makes a hard Attempt at tagging up, but he's going to stay, and that was probably a good idea because that throw was a rifle shot from the right fielder Morio to third base. So no sack fly, just a regular fly out for Allen for the second out of the inning. Brooks remains at second, and that will bring up the catcher, Bryson Dudley. 0 for 2 with a strikeout and reached on an error last inning. First pitch breaking ball misses a little high and out, ball one. Yeah, Brandon Morio catching that fly ball in right field. Uh, you're exactly right with Brooks staying at second base because Morio just threw a laser into third base. That was impressive. Whoa. And next pitch is swung on, and that's going to get all the way down oh. to the left field corner for extra bases. That's impressive as well. They hit down the left field line right there. Brooks scores Brooks. easily from second, and Dyson is or uh, Dudley is in with a two-out RBI double. And with that run coming across, that will make the score 6-1 to now, Cedar Ridge. Still two away here. That brings up the number four hitter and still current pitcher for Cedar Ridge, Danny Valadez, who has reached both times tonight on a walk. And first pitch Valdez is a little bit inside, ball one. Looks like we have a courtesy runner out there for the catcher, Dudley, on second. Can't quite see the number. I suspect it's number 26, Luke Myhill again. Next pitch swung on, lofted into shallow center field. Windesman comes in a couple of steps, and he makes the grab, and that will end the inning. So one additional run comes across for Cedar Ridge here in the top of the fourth. They go up by a score of 6-1. to one. We head to the bottom of the fourth. 
three, four, five hitters do up for the Mavericks when we come back. Chris Wynn has been will lead it off for the Mavs here in the bottom of the fourth. Mavs chasing five runs and hoping to get some offense going here. Start getting some runners on base. Wynn has been uh, had an at-bat last inning, was ended on the base pass on the caught stealing. And he looks at a first pitch breaking ball that's in the back in the third. First pitch to Hartgrove misses for a ball. A couple of scores from around the district. Vista Ridge leading Hutto by a score of 6-2 in the bottom of the fourth. Westwood over Vandegrift by a score of 7-1 in the top of the fourth. And then Round Rock comfortably ahead of Stony Point, 7-0 in the top of the sixth. Next pitch, line drive, diving play by Vosick there at shortstop, but unable to come up with it, so it's going to be safe all around. So it'll be runners on first and second now. Nobody out. And designated here, Reese Connell comes up to the plate. Connell 0 for 2, strike out and ground out. Squares around a bunt, offers at it, but unable to actually lay it down. So it'll strike, be strike 1. one. Next pitch misses high and outside for ball one. How did you score that line drive, uh, Devosic? Well, I don't know. Let's see what our official scorekeeper did here. Just curious. Squares around a bunt again, but pulls back as the pitch misses outside. So I can update my score sheet accordingly. Scorebook says single. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. So two singles so far this inning. I think I'm gonna throw around, turn around, and throw a second, but nothing doing there as Doolin is back safely. Triple play. Here we go. Here it comes. <laughs> I called it. Squares around a bunch again. Lays it down, but it's going to go foul. And that will be a 2-2 two -two count now to Connell.
breaking ball. Here it comes. Next pitch. Ah. Swung on a miss. Strike Stop three. For the first out. First strike out of the night for Escamilla in his relief appearance. And it looks like we're going to have a pinch hitter here. Number 21, Cody Monroe comes in and will hit in place of the right fielder, Tyler Hartgrove, in the eighth spot. Monroe misses high and inside for ball one. Next pitch misses high for ball two. Two and another count to the pinch hitter Monroe. There you go. Swings the next pitch, fouls it back into the screen. Two one pitch to Monroe. After a long look at the runner at second mm -hmm. there, Escamilla decides to step off. And checks a swing, throw down to runner trying to steal third, and they're going to call him out. Got him. Second out. It's kind of a late jump by the uh, runner of second duel in there, and Bangs pulled the trigger there, threw it down to Sandusky at third, and Doolin is out trying to steal third. That'll be the second out of the inning now in the caught stealing. Hartgrove still the runner on first, and is a 3-1 count to the pinch hitter Monroe. Runner takes off. They're going to throw down. That throw is going to be offline, though, and gets into center field. Not enough for anyone to advance, though, as it's ball four anyway. Two-out walk for Monroe. And that will bring up the number nine hitter, Norton. And we're going to have a courtesy runner or a pinch runner for the pinch hitter. Pinch me if I'm dreaming. I uh, will. You're dreaming. Number 13, <laughs> oh, number 13, Tyler Hartgrove, Somebody. who was pinch hit for, goes into. He's, he's now. Pinch running. Yeah, pinch running at first base. That's a new one. Okay. And no, you weren't dreaming. Apparently so I wasn't. I shouldn't have pinched you. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and the hitter Norton swings and misses the first pitch, strike one. Don't see that move every day, do you? <laughs> can't say I I can't remember the last have time. Have you I, seen I that move? That I don't know if I have either. <laughs> but that's the go up there and take the at bat for me. If you get on base, then I'll go <laughs> yeah. and take the uh, I'll take the credit. <laughs> Tyler Tyler Hartgrove, back in the game. Get back out there. You're gonna pinch run at first base. All right. Next pitch to Norton misses for ball one. Pretty good lead for Hartgrove over there at first, but uh, Collins not playing the bag very tightly. No. Collins isn't worried about him. So where are we at now? 21? Yeah. Two outs. Next pitch swung on. Ground ball second base. Oh! oh kicks up over the head of... Second baseman Goins, and then it gets oh, past the right fielder, Morio, and that's going to allow one run to score. 
tough play there. This hard infield. Yeah. You know, sometimes we see that where the ball just hit the dirt and just take a take a high bounce. Goins made a nice valiant effort trying to attempt to yeah. get that ball leaping up as high as he could, but it's another run scored. Making the score now seven to two, Cedar Ridge. And on the throw in there, that allows the hitter Norton to advance to second. So runners on second and third as Matt Brooks, the leadoff hitter, comes up. Ground ball to Vasek it's short, but unable to come up with it there. So Brooks will be safe. And that allows another run to score as the other Hartgrove, Tyler Hartgrove, comes in and scores from third. Norton advances to third on that play. And that makes the score 8-2 to two now, Cedar Ridge. Tucker Allen stands in. Tucker 1-3 for three with a ground out, double, and flew out. And he swings at the first pitch and lines a shot into the right center gap. That's going to be down for a double. And one run is going to score. Brooks takes a big turn off of third base. They throw over there, but he's going to get back safely. So an RBI two-out double for Allen. Now batting number 16, Bryson Dudley. And that's going to bring up Bryson Dudley. Runs on second and third. And first pitch misses low in the dirt for ball one. Dudley one for three tonight. Strikeout back in the first, reached on an error and scored a run in the third and then had a double in his last at bat in the fourth. Mavs defense, help your pitcher out. All we need is one more out. Next pitch misses a little low and out. Yeah. Ball two. Nobody up in the Mavs bullpen. So it's going to be all on Escamilla and his defense mm -hmm. here to yep. get out of this one. Get out of this inning. Big swing and a miss on that next pitch there. Apologies earlier, folks. There looks like we lost a uh, we lost a streaming connection for a little bit due to a cell tower going down. We got it repaired a few minutes ago. Hopefully, you've been tuning back in. Nice breaking ball for second strike there. We got two two with two down. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. Runners on second and third. Bunch of twos. Deuces. And next pitch misses. Bounces in the dirt in front of the plate. And that, and that brief interruption in the streaming service there. Looks like the weather knocked out our streaming provider up in Oklahoma. Probably as a result of some of that rough yeah. weather that produced a tornado here just before game time. 3-2 pitch. Misses outside. Ball four. Yeah, I was en route to the ballpark, and um, the Pflugerville weather guy, James Greenhaw, he had a live stream on Facebook that popped up on my phone, <laughs> and uh, talking about the tornado near Salado. Ah, uh, Salado, uh, yeah. yeah. And, uh, so he was saying, I'm, I'm in Las Vegas right now, but yeah, I think it's about a F2 or F3 tornado. So wow. crazy stuff, crazy weather. All right, number 26, Myhill goes in to run at first. Courtesy runner for Dudley, who just reached on the walk. And then now with bases loaded and two outs, that brings up Danny Valdez. Valdez 0 for 1 tonight with a fly out, but two walks. And he looks at... Oh, that looked good. Uh, but ball called ball. Ball two, seemed to miss a little, maybe a little bit high outside. Uh, well, I thought it looked good. <laughs> but what do I know? 2-0 pitch, misses low and inside, ball three. And 
Next pitch's pitch misses a little bit inside. Ball four. Okay. So that's going to walk in a run. Everybody moves up one base. Making the score 10 to Cedar Ridge over McNeil. And with that, Cedar Ridge is batted around this inning. We have another Number courtesy one, runner. Joey Daniel, courtesy runner, first base. And Peyton Doolin stands in here with two outs for the second at bat this inning. And base is loaded. And he looks at ball one that misses low and inside. Mm -hmm. There we go. There's a strike. What one pitch, ground ball, second base, fielded by the second baseman Goins, throws over to first. A little bit of a crazy throw there, but fielded well by Collins, and that will end the inning. Cedar Ridge tacks on four more, goes up by a score of 10 to 2, and we're heading to the bottom of the fifth inning. Nine hitter, then back to the top of the order for the Mavericks. We'll be right back. All right, leading off for the Mavs here in the bottom of the fifth. James Morio. Looks at called strike one. Morio reached on a single. Was a starting pitcher. This game came out as uh, Escamilla went in relief in the third. But looks like he's going to be hitting in Escamilla's place. And he swings and misses at another changeup change that misses outside. Or uh, that was high and outside there. So 0-2 count to Morio. And next pitch is swung on a miss, strike three. Back to the top of the order, brings up leadoff hitter Jack Goins. Goins with a walk and then uh, popped out to first base so far tonight. First pitch is in there for called strike one. Breaking ball misses a little low and out. One one pitch swung on, fouled out of play. A couple of updates on scores around the district. Vista Ridge leading Hutto by a score of nine to two in the bottom of the fifth. 
Westwood up 8-1 over Vandegrift in the bottom of the fifth. As There's a hit. Goins hits a line drive Goins. over the head of the shortstop, and it's going to roll all the way out to the fence in left Easily, center field. Yeah, at least getting two, which, yeah, he'll hold and it in second base. So Goins comes up with a two, with a one-out double. And that'll bring up Ryan Vosick to the plate. And then one final around the district. Ron Rock has defeated Stony Point by a score of 7-0. First pitch to Vosick misses outside for a ball. Valadez, uh, pitcher for Cedar Ridge, still going strong in the bottom of fifth inning here. Next pitch swung on, line drive nice into center cut. field. That's going to get down for a base hit. Goins is going to be waved around. Here comes the throw in. Oh, nope. he oh, holds it. Hold third, up third. Ryan Vosick makes it to second, though, with the throw towards home. So second and third. Runners on second and third with one out. Single for Vosick, makes it to second on the throw. Goins moves up to third. So two runners in scoring position now with one out. Brings up center fielder Chris Windesman, who had a strong opposite field double out to left field in his last at bat and also scored a run last inning. And look at the first pitch that misses inside and low. Do it again, Windy, just like last at bat. Big oh. swing and a miss. Strike one. Hit it where they ain't. Hit it hard. <laughs> where they ain't. That's pretty swing on hard ground ball. Diving oh. play by the first baseman. He's going to take the forces first. Nice play by the yeah. first baseman there to get the out, but that does allow an RBI to come across as, as Goins advances easily from third there. Tip my ball cap to the first baseman on that play. But it does score a run. If that would have gone through, yeah. that would have been two Oof, runs. Yeah. And a stand up double again for Windesman, but right. unfortunately he made the play. So two outs now. One run comes across, making can score 10 3. And Jackson Collins stands in and looks at called strike one. Next pitch misses outside. Ball one. Branky ball in there this time for called strike two. Tries to check his swing. Umpire says he went around for strike three. So that will end the inning, but Maz with a couple of hits there, managed to bring one run around, reduce the gap now to seven runs. Heading to the top of the sixth inning, Cedar Ridge still ahead comfortably by a score of 10 to three. We'll be right back.
All right, we've got another pitching change for the Mavericks here. Left-handed senior Timothy Calderon has come in in relief for Dom Escamilla. And Calderon will face 6-7-8 part of the lineup here as he throws a first pitch strike to the number six hitter, Hudson Hartgrove. Hartgrove two for three with two singles and a fly out. He looks at the next pitch, breaking ball that misses outside. Big swing and a miss to the next pitch, strike two. One other defensive change we did notice here is uh, out in right field. Brandon Morio has come in and is replaced by James Morio. And Hartgrove looks at called strike three. So Calderon comes in and gets one quick strikeout in his relief appearance. One away. That'll bring up designated hitter number five, Connell. Connell 0 for 3 with two strikeouts and a ground out to second base. And the wind blows Calderon's hat off <laughs> mid-delivery there. And, but he gets the call for a strike. A call strike. Yeah. There we go. It's like we read another final score. Vista Ridge has defeated Hutto by a score of 12 to 2. Okay. Oh, the next pitch misses for a ball. Next pitch swung on, lofted out of play. It's going to be one ball, two strikes. One, two pitch, swung on, ground ball, second base, fielded by Goins, throws over to first. There you go. And Connell is retired for the second out of the inning. Two up, two down. And looks like number 13, Tyler Hartgrove, is going to return back in to hit in his original position. It was pinch hit for by Monroe in the last at bat of the spot, back in the fifth. And then, interestingly, his pinch hitter Monroe reached first on a walk, and then uh, Hartgrove went in there and pinch ran for him. So Hartgrove yeah. looks at ball one. Which confused the heck out of us. I don't think we'd ever seen that before. Yeah, I don't <laughs> see that one every day. <laughs> Two and oh, the count to Hartgrove. Green light on 2 0, -oh, swings at the uh, pitch there and just taps it foul. Umpire's going to go over and pick it up for himself. One pitch misses a little low and inside. Three one pitch swung on hard ground ball gets over the glove of the third baseman Sandusky and into left field for a two out single. So with Hartgrove aboard now with two outs here in the top of the sixth, that's going to bring up number nine hitter Kyle Norton. And he looks at a first pitch breaking ball in there for a called strike. Norton has reached in all three appearances tonight. Catcher's interference and then two singles. Also scored two runs. Next pitch, fastball misses outside low. Kicks in the dirt, gets away from catcher Banks, but he keeps it in front of him and runner does not advance.
Runner goes. Pitch is swung on. Line drive into the gap right in the right gap, center right field. Center. That's going to get yeah. down for extra bases. Hargrove is going to be waved around. He's going to score easily. And Norton's going to try for three. He's and got it. He's got it. A stand-up two-out triple with an RBI. With Hartgrove scoring for Cedar Ridge, that makes the score 11 to 3. Cedar Ridge. And that'll bring us back to the top of the Cedar Ridge order. Leadoff hitter Matt Brooks. Brooks is a triple shy of the cycle tonight. Had a double in the first to lead off the game, a two-run home run in the third, reached on a fielder's choice, and then had a single, <coughs> a single back in the fifth. And he strokes the next pitch out into the gap in left field, and let's see if he's going to go for three. Picked up by Simpson out at the wall, and he's going to hold up. He, oh, but the throw's going to get past, and they're, he's going to try to get the third. Throw is in, and he is safe. But technically it wasn't a That's, triple. He gets the third base, but it's actually a double. He has a, a double with an error, I guess. Or I don't know if they're going to call that. Well, it looks but like he kind of hurt himself yep. on that slide there, but probably not enough to. If he would have just kept running on the initial throw in, like he, you know, yep. he would have had a triple. I don't know. That's just what I saw. Right? So another yeah. RBI makes the score 12-3 Cedar Ridge. Two outs, runner on third, and that brings up shortstop Tucker Allen. Tucker Allen with two doubles tonight, two for four. Yeah. And Allen looks at a first pitch called strike. Next pitch gets away from the catcher Banks and back to the wall, and that's going to allow Brooks to just come across easily. And score another run, which puts Cedar Ridge up by a score of 13-3 to now. Brooks, that center fielder for Cedar Ridge, he's an impressive, he's a very impressive uh, Tough out. athlete. Yep. Hitting very well tonight. And it's fun to watch on the bases. The kid can fly. So we got 13 to 3 Cedar Ridge now. Yep. And Allen takes the next pitch and hits a hard ground ball right up the middle into center field for another two out single. And we do have a, it looks like we have a right hander up in the Mavericks bullpen. Let's see who it is. Don't look at me, Jason. I can't see that far. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the catcher, Bryson Dudley, Sorry. stands in now with runner on first. Two outs. Looks at called strike one. And a one pitch misses a little low and inside. I think that may be in the Mavericks bullpen, Detucci, number three, Justin Detucci. I'm going out on a limb here. So, John Shook tells me up here that's a good guess. So, so we want to go with that one, sure. There we go. We'll go with All that. All right. Oh, runner goes. And next pitch is in there for a called strike. No throw down, though. So, Allen in with a stolen base, second. One and two, the count to the hitter, Dudley. And runner goes There again. he goes. He had a big lead coming off second base. Uh, next pitch is in the dirt. No throw down attempt. So back-to-back -back stolen bases for Allen. He now stands at third. And two ball, two strike count to the hitter, Dudley. And another ball misses in the dirt. So count will go full.
There's pitch swung on, fouled. Grounded down the uh, third base side. Three two pitch. Fastball misses outside and high ball four. Now batting number twenty two, Danny Valdez. So a two out walk for Dudley. He's gonna head back in and get a courtesy runner. And looks like our usual suspect there, Luke Myhill, number twenty six, goes mm -hmm. in and courtesy runs again. So runners on first and third. Still two outs. Brings up Danny Valadez. And he looks at a first pitch breaking ball in there for called strike. Valadez with three walks and flew out to center field tonight. So all that amounts to an 0 for 1. And next pitch is swung on, lofted, popped in the air, foul territory. Collins giving chase over there, but he's just not going to be able to get to it. Wind started to bring it back. A little bit more towards Collins, you know, but uh, just too far out of the reach. Jackson Collins there. Good effort. Second strike with that foul ball. Comes the 0-2 pitch. Swung on deep drive out into center field. Wind has been given chase going back. That's trouble. That ball's going to get down, bounce off the fence. Allen scores easily from third. Courtesy runner Myhill is going to score all the way from first. And it's a two-out, two-RBI double for the pitcher, Valadez. That will bring us to the number five hitter, Peyton Doolin. Swings the first pitch, ground ball to second base, fielded by Goins, but can't quite find the handle on it. Throws over to first, not in time. Courtesy runner, Daniel, for Valadez on second, scores on the throw. And Doolin will reach second base on the throwing error. And with that, Cedar Park has batted around again. And here comes head coach Aguirre to the mound. Coach Aguirre is going to come out for a mound visit. Hudson Hartgrove will come to the plate. And it looks like we're going to have a pitching change. Number three. And it is uh, Justin DiTucci, number three. Justin DiTucci, yeah. senior, is going to come in and relief for Calderon. We'll let him get his warm-up pitches here, and we'll be right back.
All right, the senior Justin Dutucci, right-hander, comes in in relief for Tim Calderon. He inherits a runner on second and has two outs, and he will face Hudson Hartgrove who is uh, batting for the second time this inning. Struck out, actually was the first out uh, and when he led off this inning. And he looks at ball one to start the at-bat. Big swing and fouls it back to the screen on the second pitch. Next pitch breaking ball misses low and outside. Good stop by the carrot by the catcher Garrett Banks. Next pitch fastball misses a little up. Count will go to three and one on Hartgrove. Next pitch swung on line down the line in left field, and that's going to roll all the way to the left field corner. Doolin's going to score easily from second. And Hartgrove is in with a stand-up double with two, uh, two, uh, two out RBI double. Looks like we're going to have a pinch hitter here. Still can't quite see the number. No, I can't see the number either. So whoever it is is hitting in place of the seventh spot in place of the designated hitter, Connell. Let's see if he'll turn now. Is it 19? Looks like 19. So number 19, Tyler Duncan comes in. And he hits in the seventh spot. Yeah. He just turned fully. I was like, okay, that's 19. So, Tyler Duncan. Yep. So, uh, one ball, one strike count to Duncan. And next pitch gets away from the catcher Banks. And that's going to allow Hartgrove to advance to third. Comes a 2-1 pitch. Fastball misses outside. There we go. 3-1 nope. nope. pitch misses high. Ball that four. Ball four. All right, so runners on first and third now, two outs. Brings up the number eight hitter, Tyler Hartgrove. And he looks at the first pitch fastball, misses a little high and out, ball one. Pitch fastball catches the outside part of the plate, called strike. Next pitch swung on, popped up. All right. Foul territory, first base side. Collins is underneath yes. it, and he makes the grab, and that will end the inning. Cedar Ridge tacks on seven runs, now up very comfortably by a score of 17 to 3. Mavs 
Need to tack on a bunch to keep the game going here and avoid the run roll as they head to the bottom of the sixth. We'll be right back. All right, a whole host of defensive changes. Too many to uh, keep track of here for Cedar Ridge. But uh, <laughs> most notably, we have a new pitcher. Left-hander Luke Salters, number seven, has come in in relief for Danny Valadez. And he's going to face five, six, seven of the Mavs order here. Leading off Garrett Banks. I love that, Jason. Just too many to announce. <laughs> We're just not going to worry about it. <laughs> And Banks oh, fouls the first pitch off perfect. out of play. And I'm not kidding. That was perfect. Well played, sir. Well, I mean, this isn't well like announced. this isn't like the major leagues. Nobody runs up the defensive <laughs> changes to us here. We have to try to with our <laughs> mid forties like, oh, and fifties eyes try uh, to determine okay, it. Okay, so. who's that in right field? I don't know. Who's you've got the binoculars? John Shook, pass me the binoculars. Yeah. Can't see a number. No. We do the very best we can, don't we, Jason? We work with what we're given, indeed. Yep. So, 1-1 one, one pitch to Banks is a called strike on the outside corner. He wasn't super happy about that call here, but... Uh, I'm still waiting for my paycheck to arrive in the mail. Yep. You yep. got yours yet? No, it must be lost in the mail like that day for <laughs> Christmas la uh, National Lampoon's <laughs> Christmas Vacation. Got stuck <laughs> in between the seats. Uh Next pitch almost hits Banks on the back foot there for a ball. So two balls, two What'd strikes. you get Jelly of the Month Club? One-year subscription. It's the gift that keeps on giving, Clark. <laughs> that it is, Edward. <laughs> that it is. <laughs> Next pitch misses, so count goes full to Banks. And next pitch misses high and outside, ball four. 
Hey, it's 17 to 3, Cedar Ridge. We got to make this fun, y'all. Um, All right, we're going to have a courtesy runner for Banks, the catcher yep. at first. Uh, is that number eight, Granky? I believe that's Granky. Yes, I think the senior. Number eight, Cole Granke has come in Cole, and is yep. the runner at first now. Courtesy runner for the catcher, Banks. Ramsey Simpson, the hitter. He swings the first pitch, pop fly, shallow center fields. It may be. No, the other comes in a I'm couple wrong. of steps over to his right, and he makes the grab. Thought it may be trouble, and then, no. Center fielder made that look easy for the first out. All right, we're going to have a pinch hitter, number 22. The senior Ryan Shook is going to come in and hit in the seventh spot in place of Brandon Morio. Now batting for the Mavericks, number 22, Ryan Shook. I love that song. Ryan Shook looks at a first pitch fastball over the heart of the plate there for called strike one. Gets me fired up. Oh, so he's the next pitch, yeah. drives a shot into the gap in left center field, but oh, unfortunately man. left fielder is over there and makes the grab. Well hit ball, just left fielder was right around the neighborhood of where that ball ultimately ended up. Great contact. So Shook flies out, second out of the inning. That's going to bring up the designated hitter, Caleb Crail, and it will be upon him to try to keep this inning alive and the rest of the game. First pitch to him misses inside for ball one. Next pitch misses outside and high gets away from the catcher. That's going to allow Granke to advance to second base. And the other remaining game in district play that's still going here, we've got in the top of the seventh, Westwood leading Vandegrift by a score of 8-5. to five. You had all of us leaning in. <laughs> right, John Chuck? <laughs> and that, that we last pitch manages to plunk Crail there on the him. leg. So he keeps the game going <laughs> on the hit-by-pitch. Runners on first and second, and... Uh, Number nine hitter, Morio, James Morio, was coming out, but he got sent back. And there's likely going to be a pinch hitter for him. Let's see who. Will they bring out his twin brother, Brandon? No, can't no, do that. No, can't do that. He was just pinch hit for no, the seventh spot. It cannot happen. Uh, can't quite tell who's getting. Well, we have to wait and see. It's a surprise. Shrouded in mystery. Oh, Here we go. Uh, Ryan Schneider. Looks like Ryan Schneider is yes. in. Ryan the Schneider. Ryan Schneider. That's right. Number 25 for the Mavericks. Now batting number 25, Ryan Schneider. And he looks at a first pitch fastball that misses low and outside, ball one. Another pitch misses low. Ball two. Two outs. Two outs on the scoreboard. Two Thank you. Two and the count to the pinch hitter Schneider. Takes a big hack at the next pitch he sees and Heads fouls up. it Ooh, right into some some population here in the. Uh, <laughs> On the Mavs side of the bench, and I think he hit it into his own family. <laughs> <laughs> That's Jill Schneider, the aunt and the of, next of batter Ryan Schneider. Next pitch misses for she ball three. Yeah. I think both she's got the ball. Both base runners <laughs> thought it was ball four and just kind of casually yeah. sauntered up a base. <laughs> <Right>. So <laughs> it was the least aggressive double steal I've seen in my life, folks. And 
that next pitch is misses for a ball. So 3-1 count now to Schneider. And big swing to miss on that last pitch there. Ball two, or strike two. So Mavs down to the last strike. 3-2 count, two outs, runners on second and third. And the next pitch is swung on a miss, strike three. So that'll end the game. Mavs were in it pretty close till kind of the later innings there. End up losing kind of in lopsided fashion. By a final score of 17 to 3. Thanks for joining us here, folks, tonight. Uh, quick note: due to the Good Friday holiday coming up, next game uh, at Cedar Ridge will be this Thursday at 7 o'clock. So be sure to join us then as the Mavs head over to Cedar Ridge to try to even the score here. Thanks again, folks. Final score: 17 to 3. Have a good evening. Take care. Good night, everyone.